We're discussing building a camper out of a Tacoma. It's how do you do that? It's a pretty small vehicle. We knew certain things. We wanted to have a pass through from the cab into the back, but it just kept evolving and it came into, you know, let's do an actual overland vehicle. Everybody's seen a house being built and you see it going from the frame up and first there's just a slab of concrete on the ground. And then you start seeing some wooden walls go up, but you still don't really get an idea until you see some of those arches go in or whatever. You go, oh look, they're doing a round room over there. And that's, that's kind of what the progression of this has been. When it finally rolled in last night, my jaw dropped. It came out so good that you're gonna look at this thing and you're gonna think, wow, that must have been a really big mold. That looks like a big fiberglass piece on the back. It's not. It's steel, it's aluminum. Going from sheet metal to actually having paint on it definitely gave more definition to the vehicle. This is where the hinges, there'll be two more hinges like this one that hold the back door on. Today we were uh, putting the door on for the first time after paint, which everything grows a little bit, whether it's powder coat paint, um, just any type of coating. And so you're always gonna have a little bit of tolerance. And so we try and build the tolerance into the part to where it'll accept everything. And sometimes it's just really close, which this door is really close, just the way it's shaped. It just takes some time to go back and forth with, like I said, loosening screws, tightening other screws first, then tightening those and just back and forth. But now it seems to be fitting pretty good. First of all, I like the wheel tire package on it. I think it looks really, really aggressive. So this is a um, general grabber and a TRD wheel. Some of the tricky parts were, we ended up using four fender flares to make a flare that would fit all of this. And it came out looking like it was built for the vehicle. So we wanted to put the TRD snorkel on it because I think it's a really neat feature and especially for this kind of a vehicle. But one of the problems we had is that the actual snorkel normally would end up about here. So this had to be trimmed, sectioned, and fitted back in again. We inset a rigid light bar just above the windshield. Had to make brake lights and running lights. Purposely, we didn't put a black water tank in it because we used a cartridge toilet. You pull that down, you pull that out, it's locked up. We have a hot water heater right behind that panel there. As far as the interior goes, we're really happy with it. Very, very small touches that still need to be done on it. There's a bunch of little details in this that I think are, are pretty special and unique to this vehicle. This is not an off the shelf thing at all. There's literally not one piece of aftermarket on this that has been put on and just put on the way it is. It's cozy, it's nice, it's comfortable, it's perfect for two people. And like I said, this should be able to get you anywhere, anywhere you want to go off the beaten path and be able to be super comfortable when you do it. I think it's going to grab a different kind of crowd that we normally would. It's definitely different and SEMA seems to like different. So, In the late 70s, early 80s, Toyota partnered up with a company called Chinook to build one of the coolest little campers that was on the market at the time. And some of the crazy thinkers in the marketing department thought, how cool would it be to do a version of that same vehicle, but do it today? It'll be off-road style. We're starting with a TRD Sport Tacoma with a manual transmission. You've heard of tiny houses. This will probably be more like a micro house. We've had some renderings drawn. We're starting to work on some of the engineering drawings and what it's going to take and how many people we can actually fit into it. That being the sleeping quarter above the cab. Uh, guy standing at the sink there. Guy sitting on the toilet there. And there's your table. Once we get the material here and start building it, do you think you'll build it in sections? I feel pretty confident in building the floor up to the mid rail. And then from up there, we can kind of build everything off the table. We really didn't want it to look like a refrigerator on the back of a truck, so you'll see that there is curve. It's all rounded edges. We want everything rounded. We want to eliminate as much of the approach angle, so when we're doing an off-road type of situation, you're not dragging the tail. We're looking at a really cool color scheme that is reminiscent, and I won't go much further than that because that's all to be determined. Some of the big challenges are gonna be just having to shrink everything. Motorhomes are built 
to be able to hold someone six foot two to walk nose to tail in this vehicle, um, be able to cook, there's room for a couch, spread out. We are so space limited that finding things that we can package inside of there is going to be a challenge on its own. Another really cool thing about this vehicle is it's going to be a beast. I mean, people are going to know when you show up, whether you're hitting the uh, grocery store on your way out of town, it's gonna stick up four feet above any other vehicle in that parking lot. Should be no problem finding your car. Don't have to worry about where you parked it because as soon as you walk out the door, you'll see it. I just hope that I can be half as cool as the original Chinook was. I know it'll be more modern. I know there'll be more technology in it, but we'll see. Being around